So I'd like to welcome to the stage our six previous, sorry, current investigators from the NIDCR Division of Intramural Research. Could you please come up here and take your seat? Uh, Dr. D'Souza will be moderating this session. So, Rena, over to you. So just a little bit of background. NIDCR's Division of Intramural Research was one of the earliest founded on our campus. It's investigators, in my opinion, and, and most of you will agree, have driven paradigm shifts for the overall field of biomedical research, whether it was the microbiome, whether it was stem cells, inflammation, Sharon Wall, matrix biology, skeletal biology. We drove new discoveries that actually was, was picked up by other institutes and the general field because of what these intramural researchers accomplished. So it was only fitting for us to kind of take a glimpse at that history, how it drove research to the present time and how each one of you in your focus areas predict where this research will be 25 years from now, even 100 years from now. So I wanted to start by uh, uh, introducing uh, Marin Young, who is a senior investigator of the molecular biology of bone and teeth, and she also serves as deputy director to the scientific director, Matt Hoffman. Marin has been working for many, many years, decades, on the structure and function of extracellular matrix proteins, in, in particular those that are found in hard tissues, and we own the most unique of them, whether it's enamel or dentin and alveolar bone, cementum as well. So Marion, take it away. Thanks, Rena, so much. Um, we were tasked to describe to you what were some major strides that we accomplished in the last 75 years. But of course, I haven't been around that long. I'm going to start <laughs> only 50 years ago. So it starts with my mentor, John Termine. Um, he is a biophysicist and a biochemist, and he was hired by Marie Nylon. And he had a very, very simple question. And the question was, how, does, how do mineralized tissues form? It's very, very simple. And what he did was he devised a method in which he could remove the mineral, which is only found in bones and teeth and other uh, uh, tissues like that, and extracted it out and ran it out on a gel. You'll, I'm not supposed to show the slides. But what was interesting is there weren't that many. And the question was, how can we figure out what these do? And in the early days, we didn't have the technology and the tools yet. So we were relying on sequencing just a small portion of the end terminus of the proteins. But that was not enough to figure out what was going on. So in collaboration with Larry Fisher, who was a biochemist, and Pam Roby, who you're going to hear about uh, her work soon, who is a stem cell biologist, we decided to go about and clone the genes that were expressed by mineralized tissue. And by doing that, we could figure out the structure of these uh, genes and then functionally, and you're going to hear from Dr. Kulkarni, what we ended up doing is actually making animal models deficient in the proteins that are made in bone. And as we predicted, those models have bone defects. And in some cases, they have low bone mass. And in some cases, we were surprised they actually make bones where they're not supposed to. <laughs> so using our tools that we uh, developed, we go our, our circling around. The first question is, yeah, OK, you've made these animal models, but how, does how do tissues mineralize? Well, we've used all the reagents now that we've had, including some that Jay has created, and I don't think Brian is here, adenoviruses, so on and so forth, gain of function, loss of function. And we've, we now know that most of the matrix proteins are actually secreted outside the cell and bind to growth factors. And in doing so, they actually regulate stem cell fate. So I will argue to you that over the last 25 years, 50 years, we've made great strides very great strides. But in part of the process of figuring out how things wake, work, we've had a very important role in mentorship and training. And the many people that have come through the lab, I call it the three C's, they have learned about critical thinking, about collaboration, 
And what I try to instill in my trainees is confidence. That's very important in their training. So I'm going to stop there if you want to have questions. Very simple. So, so in the field of sibling proteins, as, because I grew up with Bill Butler and Benoit de Combrouge and Gerard, um, where do you see that field emerging in the next 25 years? The connection with uh, cancers, for one, uh, obviously biomineralization itself, uh, human genetic disorders of, the of mineralized tissues. Uh, just tell us more. Where we've seen a lot of interesting advances is in the area of tissue engineering. Now, I alluded to the fact that the matrix proteins can regulate cell fate. So the interaction of the cells with the matrix and the utility of that for reconstruction, I think, is very important. But I'm a big advocate of learning how things work before you figure out how to fix them. So it's the, my, my preclinical work that is my passion. So would you say that the mineralized tissue-specific proteins would be at least hone in and say they are very responsible for biomineralization. Do you, what is their role when they're detected in salivary glands, for example? Because I do know of, of the cross-overlapping expression patterns so in non-mineralizing organs. It could be in the salivary gland they actually have inhibitory roles uh, as in pose. What always surprised me is, for example, we will knock out one gene and in bone, there's less bone. But in the adjacent tendon, they start making bone. How could this possibly be the exact same protein in one situation is causing low bone mass and the other high bone mass? But I do think it's all about tissue context. So there's, there's never one thing that is the, solves everything. You need to look at it in the context of other things. But when you talk about the omics, I do get a little worried about there's, you, even though we look at many, many genes, I'm still like a logical person. I want to know one by one by one. How can we use all that information to move forward? That is, that is a compelling question for the future. <laughs> yeah. Because as we go into spatial transcriptomics and other fields. Thank you, Marion. <laughs>